friends, welcome to Sew Honey Bee and our first sew along for 2019. And this one is from McCall 7322. Let's get started. At the end of this video, I will be sharing my thoughts and ideas for this pattern. Um, I've made it quite a few times, so I'm going to be sharing those tops with you as well. And they have different neckline, a different neckline on it. So um, I'll share all those pictures with you at the end of this video. In this sew along, we will be doing view C. You will need to cut out pattern pieces 1, 2, and 7. Now, numbers 8 and 9 pattern pieces are cut out out of contrasting fabric or the same fabric like I did here. You can see that I used the same um, fabric for both the band and the garment. I wanted to give you a little bit of a reminder um, in case you are using a fabric where it is hard to determine the right side and the wrong side of the fabric. You will want to mark um, the wrong side of the fabric pieces before you separate them from the paper. And here is um, the fabric that I used. And you can see here is the right side, the side that is the side that you see. And then you can clearly see that you can tell the difference between the two. This is the wrong side and this is the right side. But sometimes for knit fabrics, it is hard to uh, differentiate the two. So you will want to take either a chalk or a fabric marker and mark, uh, put a mark on the wrong side of the fabric. This is really important when we get to the armholes and the sleeves. Also, before you separate um, the pattern pieces from the fabric, you will want to make sure that all notches and all markings, circles and everything, are transferred to your fabric. This is especially important at the armhole and the sleeve so that you can make sure that those two meet up perfectly. Okay, now we're ready for step number one, and that is applying the interfacing to the neckband. You will want to be sure to put the fabric on the ironing board wrong side up and then the interfacing glue side down now when you're putting the interfacing on top of the fabric it is really easy for the fabric portion to become distorted you will want to conform the fabric piece to fit the interfaced piece because the fabric can stretch, but the interfacing won't. Fuse the interfacing with an iron, pressing down and picking up the iron. Do not glide across the fabric because it can distort your pattern piece. As you can see, since we conform the fabric to the interfaced piece, it comes out the same shape that it was intended. Now for step number two. It instructs us to put an ease stitch at the bust area. So what this is doing is it gives you a little bit of ease throughout the bust in case you need a little bit more room there. Now step number three. You want to stitch the front to the back with right sides together at the shoulder. Now the pattern calls for you just to sew across the seam. I'm going to add stretch lace to this seam. The reason is so that it gives this area stability so it won't stretch out over time with washing or wear. You can also use ribbon or twill tape. I finish off the edges by trimming the seam away and top stitching so that it looks good inside and out. Now step number four, pin the front to the back at the sides, matching your notches. 
Remember that there is an ease in the front at the bust area. Be sure that you gather this ease from the notch to the underarm. So using a 5 8 inch seam and stitch again about 1 8 of an inch outside that seam. Trim the excess seam allowance away. The reason that I sew this second line is so that I have a backup stitching line. With knits, you can pop or rip a stitch, leaving a hole in your garment. Step number 10. We are going to stay stitch the neck edge of the top using a half inch seam allowance. Now again, for stay stitching, we want a long stitch length so that we can easily take it out once we are done with it. Remember, don't back tack. So step number 11 was supposed to be the uninterfaced neckband that was supposed to be sewn at the shoulders and then sewn to the neckline. Now for this step, it is the perfect example of how no matter how many years you've sewn or how many times you've made the pattern, it is always best to carefully read your directions each time. So I'm going to explain to you um, the right way to do it, and then you won't have the same problem I did. The correct way to do step number 11 is stitch the front and the back facing of the band that does not have the interfacing at the shoulders. Now again, you want to make sure that the right sides are together. Step number 12, pin the bottom of the neckband to the neckline. Clip where needed, making sure that you do not clip beyond the stitching line or you will have a hole in your seam. I laid the pieces on the table and manipulated the fabric using my fingers to fit the two pieces together. It can be done, I promise. But I did have to remove the basting stitch in the front so that I could fit it. Now I'm going to take this to my iron and I'm going to press it. Here's the front of that band. You can see how much we had to stretch it, but it did go in. If your band comes out and it's rippled or too stretched, keep going. Because once you wash your garment, just like with any knit, it's going to find its memory and it's going to stretch back. Step number 14. Sew the bands together at the neck lined. Step number 14 instructs us to sew the bands together at the neckline. Now this is going to be your facing. This is where I should have used the interfaced band. Steps number 15 and 16 is under stitching and finishing off the band. I didn't want to do any hand stitching for a t-shirt. I just top stitched the band down, catching the facing in the inside, and trimmed away this excess seam. Now step 22 um, tells us to ease stitch this sleeve cap between your circles. Now if you are using a good and stretchy knit, you shouldn't have to ease stitch this. I will share an SOS tip on how to set in the perfect sleeve every time. So now let's go to step number 23. Stitch the sleeves together. This is where right and wrong sides are so important because you want one right and one left sleeve, not two right or two left sleeves.
Step number 24. I will be hemming in the sleeves and the bottom all at the same time. It's easier that way. So let's jump to step number 25 to set in your sleeve. Remember the front has one notch and the back has two notches. Make sure that the single notch goes together and the double notch goes together. Now, pin the top three circles or clips, whichever way you mark them. When setting my sleeve, I make the machine's feed dogs work with me. Placing the sleeve at the bottom and the garment at the top when sewing the seam. What will happen is that the feed dogs will grab the sleeve fabric and push it through as I hold the top piece, not tight, but taut. Now step 26 is the hem. I use the same stretch lace that I used at my shoulder seam when hemming my garment. Sewing it to the bottom and then trimming the fabric's edge away and then sewing it again, leaving about one quarter fabric fold and sew all the way around. Now, don't worry if there are little gathers and um, where the t-shirt got stretched out a little bit too much. Go ahead and throw it in the washer and then toss it in the dryer. All fabric has a memory, especially knit fabrics. And what's going to happen is once you pull it out of the dryer, the, that memory, the fabric is going to um, find that memory and is going to stretch back. Now I wanted to share my views and thoughts on the pattern. Now, um, I did really like this pattern, although this is the first time that I did sew view C. Now, if I choose to make this view again, what I am going to do is I am going to go ahead and use a, a separate fabric for the contrasting band. But the way I did it, where it's all one fabric, um, it didn't really make it worth it to me for the effort that I had to put into it. But if I would have used a separate fabric or a different fabric for the neckband than I did for the t-shirt, then it definitely would have been worth it. McCall 7322, out of five, I would give this a four. So now I'd like to share with you some pictures of some of the other tops that I have made using the same pattern. Now I will be making this top a couple more times for a friend of mine and making it into maternity. So the next so long will be um, details how I took the pattern and what I'm going to do in order to make a maternity top using the same pattern and um, altering it so that after the baby is born, she can continue to wear it. I'll talk to you later. Bye.